Good morning, everyone. We're just getting everything all hooked up and ready to go. And yes, we are ready to rock and roll. I've got a hoarse voice this morning. I'm not sick. Just a lot of gabbing. But that's what podcasters do. We chat a lot. Anyways, good morning, everyone. This is Carol Sir, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, live with you. This does. Good morning, everyone. It's Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 5.0. <laughs> Excuse me. Trendy Thursday. And we see some new um, flowers, which were crafted by our brother. Um, he brought them over last week, and I wanted to make sure that I showed everybody really quickly. Um, for those of you, obviously, who are listening, you can't see them, but he's been crafting these paper flowers, and they're, they're really just beautiful. And I thank him for bringing them over. And he, by the way, just celebrated his, let's see, 68th birthday yesterday. <laughs> yes, uh, we cheered him on in our family group. Uh, I don't think he saw all the messages, but we did Bobo. That's what I would call him when he was a little Bobo. And that happens to be from Bobo the Clown. And I don't know why. Maybe because he was a clown. And he's kind of good with juggling and card tricks. So I kind of kind of fits when you think about it. And that's what happens when you have a um, big family. There's a lot of birthdays and a lot of a lot of celebration always. So we do. We hope he had a great day. And he's actually working with those flowers because he's actually helping, uh, I believe it's one of his niece's weddings on his uh, wife's side. Or it's a relative. Yeah. Who's your niece? Emily's so, niece. Yeah. Too bad you didn't hone in um, on those skills when your niece Tina was getting married because she was saved us some money. <laughs> true. That's so true. I mean, <laughs> I love live flowers, but <laughs> what better way to? I mean, yeah, you get to. And and the cool thing about them when you think about it, obviously he's he's trying different. He's working on calla lilies and different shapes and different types really to make them lifelike to what they actually look like but the cool thing about that as well as you know how you can you know when you think about a bride's bouquet or even just a bouquet how nice it is a to get a bouquet you can always you know use a scent like a spray scent to make them smell like flowers but you know obviously with a paper flower eventually dust is going to come in and you're going to throw them out and guess what? You can make them again, the exact same thing, and still have that beautiful thing without, because you know, with silk flowers and all that, there's upkeep in those. They're beautiful, but you've got to like rinse them off and they collect the dust. And, you know, they're, they're hard to really, really get clean unless you wash them or whatever. And who has time for that? This, you can just say, hey, it's time for them to go. And guess what? I'm going to make a whole new bunch. That is so true. So, trending topics. Mm hmm. Lots of trending topics. I love this trending topic. Uh, as most of you are aware, we've been very, we very much been advocates for what is going on in the school systems. I'm working day in and day out um, because I, I've always been a, a child advocate, and you know, I, I think our family instilled us as children to get involved with causes that not only maybe uh, had tugged at your heart and. You, you may have had a, a personal connection, but also to be helping that, that bigger cause of who it, it actually impacts. And obviously you have hear me chatting about it quite a bit, uh, really over the last year, different things that are going on in the school systems between the mandates and the mass and you know, curriculum and questionable curriculum. And I love the fact that a school district took it, Balls to the walls, you know, and congratulations to them. Right when the uh, person in the White House who's occupying the White House has administration, we're going to call him the JJ, the DJ, came out with his letter, really kind of labeling parents that are trying to keep school boards accountable. And I, I think part of the problem is you've never seen this kind of movement all at once and I've always said on either side of the color of political spectrum there's a lot of planning and to me there was no mistake of why all of a sudden all these schools 
were hit with this, or all these parents were hit you know, across the country, really around the first 10 days when all this started coming out between CRT, uh, trans, uh, uh, not transgender, but uh, I can't think of the word, transsectionality, or, se or sectionality, transsectionality, something like that. I'm just, I can't think of what the word is off the top of my head. Along with the mandates, CRT, CES, which is uh, comprehensive sex education, which they're going to be relabeling it to a word with to include healthy, so parents cannot opt out for their children. There's a lot of things going on, but it's not a coincidence that really across certain parts of the country, all of a sudden everyone got hit at it with once. And why is that? Because it's a very well-constructed plan. When you are planning something that is going to impact a nation in volumes, you're gonna hit everybody at once. So that is not a, a coincidence that so many districts were hit. And I'm not just talking districts as a whole, I'm talking about districts within a state. So states being hit left and right, with parents saying, wait a minute, what is going on? What is my child being taught? And while I had full trust in my school system or the, uh, a board or a school committee, something's not right here. I got to get involved. I got to find out what, what's going on. So now you're having now parents that have been, you, you woke up the sleepy giant, the sleepy bear, and they're saying, what is going on? And the more they learn with between podcasts and people that are advocating, truly advocating for children, more and more information is coming out. So, of course, when you know you're not talking, you know, what's going on with my country that I cannot, you know, my hands are like, you know, I'm, I'm handcuffed. I can't do anything. I'm just a citizen. I can't do anything. And trickling that down to your local government. Well, you know, the good old boys club, which can go either way, boys or girls club. You know, who are you connected to? My hands are tied. I'm, I'm limited. But now when you start talking about their children, that is something that parents can do. That is it, that is within the realm of, I got to get involved. I got to make change. I want to know what's going on. And I want people accountable. If they're trying to interject or indoctrinate my child on subject matters, that while maybe they do have some importance, I'm going to be the one to chat with my child about that at the appropriate age. I'm not gonna be dictated by a school system that has ideologies with a political bias that is gonna infil infiltrate the mind of my child. I'm not doing that. So that is what's happening. So you're keeping people accountable. It is no different than a corporation and their um, stakeholders being making them accountable for their stocks or stockholders being making them accountable for you know decisions that they're making on the product maybe they're changing their product line in in a way that maybe the the, the stockholders don't like or the consumer doesn't like it it's impacting them of course people can make it accountable look what happened with you know to the reverse side of that when people were coming down on certain products like you know my pillow and, and goya people got pissed like hey don't you know don't be treating him that way. Don't be treating their company that way. Instead of a boycott, they did a boycott. They made their voices heard within the realm of what they could control and what they can contribute to the cause. So what's going on in the school? So what happened was this particular parent uh, school committee board was presented with a $200 million lawsuit. And touche to the DJ, because now obviously the evidence has come out that he has a bias because his son-in-law is a co-founder uh, of not a curriculum. And I need to correct myself because I think a couple of times I said curriculum. It's actually a poll type of company that specifically slants polls in a certain way. And, there's, there's, and, and they are uh, pro components of CRT. And they're, you know, we know we're not stupid. You know, when you're taking a poll, it might be slanted on getting you to think a certain way or whatever. And it's all about the wording and the choices. So obviously, if that gets shut down from a financial perspective, who does that impact? His son lost company. So there is a connection there. You cannot deny it. And people are taking control back. And I think that's that's what's trending now. People are really at this point between that. And the airlines who are, again, taking control, the pilots are taking control, the baggage claim are taking control, the counter agent is taking control. I do not want to be forced on a decision that I'm not comfortable with 
and what would happen to choice in our country would happen to having all the facts to help you and assist you in making a decision that is best for you and your family and based on the knowledge that we have today and with the ever ending numbers that are coming in of people that are having adverse effects we just had you know within the last week we've had two officers that were forced uh, and are in critical condition are in critical condition and it's directly related to that now not everyone has a side effect immediately sometimes it takes longer because again we don't know we don't have enough information so even though we respect the choice that people want to wear a mask or decide to get the arm juice it's choice it's not you know what's good for me what's good from that yes of course there's many of us that are still trying to educate others as we learn it to get the word out hey this is what's going on this is going to assist you i don't agree with that choice but i respect the person has the right to have that choice and it's because of the dangers of it i'm in fear of so many people because i actually know mo more people and it's trending more and more of people that are having an adverse effect meaning uh maybe they already had one condition but now all of a sudden it's highlighted it's on steroids now and it's going full force how many people that you know suffer from dementia all of a sudden gotten that and now all of a sudden they're extremely worse what if you had someone that was you know naturally going through that natural age process which we know balance is affected our health and wellness is always impacted as you get older but now all of a sudden you went from oh having some slight issues to you can't walk that you have you don't feel you know you're not feeling your extremities you've got numbness and your balance is way off. Like it, it's, it went, you went from zero, you went to from like three to 25 in a matter of days or, or a matter of a month. So those are the things that people are sharing. And those are just a small bit. And then never mind the tremors and the headaches and the, and the ringing of the ear and all, all that other stuff. There's so many side effects that we don't know. So it would be like you had someone that was, decided to be a, I don't know, you know, they want to start climbing mountains. And they're, they're in this mountain area where you know you've got evidence from pictures, from other people's journeys and stories, that is a very dangerous trail. And you knew a bunch of people that were gonna do that, that might be novice, that may have no knowledge of it, or, or thinking, oh, I can handle it. You know, yeah, you know, I, I, I go hiking, I can handle it. But you not only know that even the best of hikers have had difficulty, have had injuries, have fallen off the cliff. Are you not gonna warn them? Are you not gonna tell them, hey, hey, you need to really think about this. You better get you know, the trail, you better get a map, you better get some actual pictures to see whether this is something you can handle, whether your body can do this, because this is very dangerous. Why? So you're gonna tell me you're not gonna warn people that you love and that you care about, or just humanity as a whole, like, that is a dangerous mountain. You know, Avoid it at all costs. Don't you, you know what I'm getting, Jan? I mean, the, the, like, why wouldn't we warn people so even though again even with the warning at least now somebody's got the information and there's well, they still may make that same choice but at least you did your due diligence in letting them know and if you happen to impact someone to think twice about it you know what i'm not saying i'm not going to do it but you know what? i'm going to wait a little while I'm going to wait to, you know, I heard the Rangers were coming in and they're going to kind of reconfigure, you know, uh, you know, move some trees around, make it a little bit safer. I'm going to, I'm going to wait. Why wouldn't we do that? And even so, you're going to get people that are not. But wouldn't you be, wouldn't you feel bad if you didn't do your due diligence to let other people that you know that you love and humanity as a whole and let them know? And it's still, ultimately, it's their choice. We're now, th this whole situation of what's going on is that freedom piece to it to allow information to come in, to allow that person to get more educated in a certain decision that could truly impact not their life right this second, but long-term. What are their long-term effects? And I think somehow people are, are uh, people are now, what's trend is people are getting pissed off, which is good. That is true. People are getting pissed off. People are taking action. Parents are taking action. Grandparents are taking action. I wanted to talk a little bit. <clears throat> Obviously, um, this is a very sensitive subject. 
for me as a mom. As many people know, uh, my son Ryan Scott on July 19th, they believe that he in all likelihood may have had a, um, some type of a stroke. They can't, they can't confirm, they can't, that's not a confirmation. They, they're su suspecting that this is what may have happened, <laughs> which led him to faint his head um, cracked open on a concrete floor. He started seizing, uh, stopped breathing and lost his pulse. I, and I just wanna let everyone know Ryan is, is progressing um, and I'm blessed. So I just wanna you know, make sure that I <laughs> clarify all that. Those first two weeks of Ryan in the ICU were doom and gloom. The first thing that came, one of the first things that came to mind as I was traveling it, to get to my son, with everything going on with the, um, with the vaccines, is how, how can this, how can this be? There, for me as a mom, um, there was just no logic behind it. Why somebody as healthy as my son, <laughs> out of the blue out of the blue no history no history out of the blue no history and then it occurred to me um after i got to see him for the first time <laughs> walked out you know to call his dad and give him, him an update the first thing i one of the first things that i said to his dad was I hate to say this, but I think this may have something to do with the arm juice. And lo and behold, those first two weeks or however long it was of doom and gloom every day, Ryan wasn't gonna be able to do this or that. The myocarditis, <laughs> all the things that were in addition to everything else this poor kid was going through, my, my son, are all side effects, bad side effects of the vaccine. Now, I wanna tell everyone that my son went into, um, was actually urging me to, you know, we've had several discussions about the vaccine <laughs> and from what I was learning about the vaccine, <coughs> excuse me, I, I let Ryan know that I am not getting the vaccine and he would, he would, oh, and he's still to, to a certain point wants me to get the vaccine. And I understand and respect that from his perspective, I'm his mom. And I let him know that when I have the opportunity, not that I was going to the doctor anytime soon, I would ask that question because I, I want to hear it from a medical pers perspective. You know, um, I'm pretty healthy, obviously. I want to hear it from my doctor's point of view and what I've learned and have that logical discussion with my physician. And, and I guess the point that I'm trying to make for myself as an individual, obviously what um, happened to my son greatly affected not only myself, but my whole family, my whole family not just me, not just his dad, Jerry, and his wife, Susan, um, not just to Gary, but everybody. Um, for me, it only confirms that I am not getting the, the, um, the vaccine, but the ultimate point is when your government, <laughs> excuse me, thinks that they have to step in and mandate something that goes into my body, that's not about, that is not about uh, the vaccine anymore. It's about control and, and having, putting that individual, that person into making <clears throat> an ultimatum because there's no right, there's no wrong, it's all wrong. 
So which wrong are you going to choose? True, and, and the other piece to that is, I mean, look at the word control. You mm -hmm. know, we often talk about that. We're not in control. You know, we're in control of how we act and how we react, but ultimately we're not in control of the government. Never gonna be. That's uh, true. Yes, you can go, you know, <laughs> you know how that kind of works. And hopefully states are combating that. But the point being, they're trying to take away the right of how to act and how to react. It goes beyond the word control because we know we're not in control in the sense of how other people react, how other people act, how other, the mandates, we're not in control of what that, that piece of it is. But what we still are in control in is how we respond. Now we use the two words, how we act and how we react, but it's basically how you respond. What is your action steps that you're going to take? That part we are in, still in control of. So I, I, the, the word control is used in, in several different ways because at, at one point they're trying to control, but ultimately even they are not in control of right now of what, and, and, and I think that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to take away the ability for a citizen to take an action or a reaction to a situation that is going to directly impact their own lives. So there's a difference of how you use that word. And, and you know, I would think on this particular day, which is trending Thursday, is be in control of being the trendsetter. You know, understand that, you know, it's about how you, you know, respond to people, how you have an interaction with people. And are you going to leave that person or situation by your actions in a better light, a better way, leaving knowing that, you know, you left that person maybe with a smile or that you impacted them with a kind word. And it was also received on your end that you can go about your day with a smile and then share it with somebody else. And I think those are the things that should be trending is how we display on how we deal with that. You know, sometimes it's a hard subject. Sometimes you got to kind of come out of your comfort zone and get involved and be a part of the solution. Be a part of the solution by educating and sharing your knowledge. Do your due diligence to make sure that you're, whatever you're researching, you've got all facts. And then be honest. I mean, we do that all the time. We're sharing a, a particular news story or something breaking or something that's personally going on in our life. You know, we make sure to tell you this is our perspective, our, our view. And it's up to you to say, hmm, maybe, maybe they're right. Or maybe, maybe that was just a spark that you needed to do your own due diligence and not someone else do the homework for you. You go do your own homework to make your own decisions. Don't you think, Jan? Right, because due diligence comes down to just that. And I am not so sure, and, this, and I realize that this is a generalized statement, but I am not so sure that some are actually doing their due diligence by things that, and I'm not part of pointing to anybody specifically, just things in general that I've seen and comments from other people that I've seen. And, and I think, <clears throat> I don't know if they've done their, their due diligence, but it all boils down to a, a personal decision. My decision is not to get the vaccine. I've done my due diligence and I stand by that commitment for, for myself. I can't make that decision for anybody else, but we certainly respect people's decision to get it. Um, and we just, you know, we obviously hope that you're having those discussions, which I'm sure most of you are, but from what I've seen, a lot of people are not. And I think in a way that is somewhat sad. And I, I wonder, this is pure speculation, I wonder if they, just want to get it to <laughs> to have that feeling it's done and over with but the point is it never will be and i mean look at how many times 
look at how many times the goalpost has changed. And that's all I have to say about that. Exactly. And, and I also want to, before we sign off today, I want to make sure that we give a shout out to all those that are standing up, that are doing what they can what's within their control to make change. And who are those? Those are the pilots, the, anyone in the airline industry that is saying, no, no. Now, we already know we've talked about this. It's going to inconvenience. It's going to inconvenience us as a family uh, with travel plans. It's going to inconvenience us with going on trips. It's going to impact us in, you know, trying to divert and, and come up with a plan B plan because you know what's going to be happening uh, with Amtrak. There's some issues there that is going to now spill, in, spill over into rented cars if you have to go that route. We are heading for a bumpy, bumpy holiday season, folks. So don't say we didn't tell you. But what I will say is, even with those bumps, sometimes we got to take the bumps. We got to take the lumps. We got to take the derailment. We got to take, take the inconvenience. Because at the end of the day, if that's all we have to hopefully break through what is going on in our country today, so be it. Sometimes... I, and I can't remember there. I know I know one particular person that said this country has to bleed. We don't have to bleed. We got to hemorrhage. This country needs to hemorrhage in order to wake up and to really truly understand what is going on. And you know, we could we could talk and dance all we want, but if you think this is acceptable of how our country should run, I think I'll leave you with this. Where were you four years ago? Where were you? six years ago? Where were you 10 years ago? Where were you at a younger age in a more patriotic lifestyle with your family that kids were playing in the backyard? You didn't have to worry about pedophiles. You didn't have to worry about kidnappings and children trafficking. You didn't have to worry about sending your child to daycare you didn't have to uh, worry about your child running over to the neighbor next door you didn't have to worry about your child going to a sleepover you didn't have to worry about your child going to school to learn to impact their brains so they are educated and leave that time frame of their age now to become a product of society that is going to promote goodness that is going to lead that is gonna conquer, that maybe becomes a scientist, a doctor, a lawyer, a bus driver, somebody that's a, a manager in a, a grocery store. You know, you have to really think of, you have to reflect of where you came from and then look where we are right now. And if you are not scratching your head and if you're not saying, what can I do to help change what is going on in a little way, it doesn't have to be a huge way, but just even a little way, Is there anyone home up there? That's all I'm gonna say. And on that note, my name is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva. It is trending Thursday. We will be on tomorrow morning, actually a little early, um, 7 a.m. And I am with two. This is and this is Carol, so AKA Naughty Boss getting you all revved up for trending Thursday. And you know how we always leave it? You be the trendsetter. You go out, pay it forward, be kind to everyone, be respectful of everyone. Opinions and differences doesn't matter. Just make sure that you leave that conversation better than you started off with and that you left it with peace, kindness, and a smile. You guys have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow for Fantabulous Friday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.